when solving simultaneous equations, you always be given two equations. There's equation one, there's equation two. And those two equations you'll see have got two variables, a y and an x that you have to find the values for. To start off any simultaneous equation sum, what we want to do is we want to rewrite our equations that we've been given and name them just using a simple number with a circle around it. So that's equation number one. And then our other one that we were given, rewrite it. And we'll label it equation number two. That just makes it easier as we're doing our sum to be able to keep track of which equation we're busy working with. Okay, now the next step is to go and check your two equations and say, okay, now which, which of these two equations are the easiest to work with? So you can see here that this equation number two has got an x squared in it. It's also got four terms. That's definitely a more difficult equation to work with than equation number one. So we're going to use equation number one to find our first, our first letter's value. Okay, and equation number one, we're going to rewrite it here. We're going to state that we're now going to work with equation one. We rewrite the equation. And then we go and solve for either x or for y. And whenever you do this, you're going to choose again the easiest one. This y has got a 2 in front of it, so it's not the easiest one to solve for. The x is on its own there, so we're going to rather just go and solve for x. So to do that, of course, we're going to get x on its own and all this other stuff on the other side of our equal sign over here. So we've got x is equal to minus 2y plus 3. Now that's given us a value for x on its own. x is now equal to minus 2y plus 3. And we're going to name that as well. We're going to call that equation number 3. Now to be able to get our values for x and y, we need to take this new value for x and we need to substitute it back into our more complicated equation, which is equation number 2 there. So the one that we haven't used yet. So we're going to say we're going to go and substitute okay, equation number 3 into equation number 2. You can see there how our numbers that we used at the start and over here are helping now so that we know which equations we're working with. Okay, so we're going to substitute 3 into 2. So every x value that you can see in equation 2 over here, we're going to replace it with minus 2y plus 3. And you must be careful, you're always going to use a bracket to do that. So if you watch at the top here, the first letter there is just y. Okay, that we don't change. Then we've got minus 3x. So that minus 3 stays the same. The x gets replaced by minus 2y plus 3. Because that's the new value for x that we found. Then we've just got our equal sign. Then minus x squared. So that's minus. And then in the bracket, x squared. So there's our x value. Minus 2y plus 3. Close the bracket, squared, and that's squared, of course, because that x there is squared. And then don't forget the plus 6 on the end, which is just the 6 on the end there. Okay, so now we've gone and taken that equation, we've, we've changed the x's, those two, x, that x there and that x there, into our new value for x that we found, and we've substituted that in. Now to find the value for y, because as you can see, all you've got left in this equation is y, so we need to go and find the values for y, and to do that we do is stick with our normal algebra and we simply go and multiply out all those brackets and then simplify our sum. So our y stays as is, we multiply the minus 3 in, minus 3 times minus 2 is going to give us positive 6y, minus 3 times plus 3 gives us minus 9, and then equals, our minus sign stays there, and because this is a squared bracket, you should know already by now, that you're going to go and write that bracket out twice, because that's what the square tells us, that we've got two of those brackets, and then of course the six still on the end. Now on this side over here, we can simplify that. Y plus six Y is of course seven Y. And then we've got our minus nine. And then on the other side, we've got to multiply out these two brackets. The minus sign stays outside there for now. Remember that that gets done last. First we sort out the brackets, minus 2y times minus 2y is just 4y squared. 
Then we've got 3 times minus 2y is minus 6y. And we've got minus 2y times 3 again, which is another minus 6y. And then plus 3 times plus 3, which is just plus 9. And then we've got our, well, we've got to close our bracket first, be careful. And then our plus 6 is on the outside of the bracket, not inside the bracket. Okay, now we've got to multiply this minus in. Okay, so we're going to work with just the right-hand side. There's nothing more we can do here on the left. Okay, so we multiply that minus sign, which becomes minus 4y squared plus 6y plus 6y minus 9. And then the plus 6 was on the outside, so that now becomes plus 6 there. Okay, now we're going to, we can simplify the stuff on this side of our sign. That stays minus 4y squared. We can add our like terms here. 6y and 6y is just 12y. And then minus 6 plus, you know, minus 9 plus 6 is just minus 3. And okay, now we've got to this point, we want to get everything to the one side of our equal sign so that we can solve for y. So for our next step here, our 7y minus 9 was already there on that side of the equal sign. Now we take everything else over, so that will be 4y squared minus 12y plus 3 equals 0. Okay, now we're going to go and identify our like terms, and we're going to add our like terms. We always like to, if you, if you struggle with this, to go and use a few shapes just to identify our like terms. So that 4y squared is on its own, so we put a circle around that. <coughs> then our 7y and our minus 12y, we're going to put a little rectangle around, so we know that those are like terms, and then of course, We've got our two constants left. So the 4y squared hasn't got another y squared around. So that's just going to remain 4y squared. My, our 7y minus 12y gives us minus 5y. And then of course minus 9 plus 3 leaves us with minus 6, all equal to 0. Now you should notice of course that this is now a trinomial. And we need to go and solve for y. So we know we're going to go into two brackets. And you can use your calculator to find the factors that need to go into those brackets. But this is going to be 4y plus 3. And this one will be y minus 2. And you can check yourself. If you multiply that back out, you should get what you started with there. And then with that, if we go and make this, this um, bracket equal to 0, we'll find that y is equal to minus 3 over 4. And then if you do the same with this bracket, we'll find that y is equal to 2. Okay, so those are the two solutions for y for our simultaneous equation. But we still have to find the values for x. And to do that, we're going to take each of these two values and substitute them back into the easiest equation. Now, earlier on, we decided that this first question, this first equation here was the easiest one. So we're going to substitute our values for y back into equation number 1. Okay, so if we go back here, we go. We now remember we've got to state what we're doing. So we're going to say we're going to substitute y equals minus 3 over 4 into equation number 1. Now equation number 1 was x plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. So here's our x plus 2y. We're now replacing y with minus 3 over 4. Okay, because that's our new value for y. Then our minus 3 equals 0. Now, as we've done that, we can now go and solve for x and get our first value for x. We need a therefore sign there. Okay, to, sub to go and simplify that, if we multiply this 2 in, remember that 2 gets multiplied by the top part of the fraction. So that will be x, and it's positive times a negative, so that's going to be negative. There's the positive and the negative. Minus 6 over 4, minus 3 equals 0. Now we want to get x on its own. So we're going to leave x on this side and take these two things over. So that will be just 6 over 4 plus 3. Now to add those, you can do it on your calculator. Or you can simplify that 3 into quarters as well. So that you can easily go and work that out. I'm just going to move this up a bit. So if we do that... We'll have 6 over 4 plus 
12 over 4. Because of course, 3 is equal to 12 over 4. And if we add those together, we get 18 over 4. Okay, 6 plus 12. And if we simplify that, it's going to be 9 over 2. And that's our first value for x. Okay, but we're not done. That's only 1 because we've only substituted in the 1 value for y. We've got to do the same thing for the other value for y as well. So again, we're going to start off by saying, okay, we're going to go and take, we're going to go and substitute y equals 2 into equation number 1. Okay, and that will therefore be x plus 2 times, okay, our value for y now is 2, so x plus 2 times 2 minus 3 is equal to 0, and if we simplify that, we have x plus 4, 2 times 2 there, minus 3 equals 0, which is nice and easy, that 4 minus 3 is just 1, and then if we get x on its own, we can see that x is equal to minus 1. Now that's all of our values that we need for our simultaneous equation. Okay, and at the end of any simultaneous equation, what we then do is we state everything we found out, and we can say that therefore y was equal to minus 3 over 4, or y was equal to 2. Okay, and then x we found was equal to 9 over 2, or x was equal to minus 1. Okay, once you've gotten all four of those values, you've now completed your simultaneous equation.